Reading from For God So Loved, I'm Forgiven, The Slant 2022, continuing with page 12. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. John eight thirty three through 36. Believing in Jesus is the first step in our faith journey. However, to truly be his disciples, we need to go on to keep receiving and following his word. If we do remain in Christ and in his word, we shall know the truth and the truth will set us free. Whoever commits sin is its slave. How true this is. But the son wants to liberate us from the slavery of sin and to set us truly free, to be fully alive. Dear God, Thank you for the gift of faith. You have invited me into a relationship with you that will last for all eternity. You call me to continue to read your word, to commune with you daily, and to follow your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Help me today to submit my will to yours, O Father, and to do whatever you tell me. In this way, You shall receive glory, and I shall be set free. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus said, This is a wicked generation. It asks for a sign, but none will be given it except the sign of Jonah. The men of Nineveh will stand up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And now something greater than Jonah is here. Luke eleven twenty nine, thirty two. 32. Jesus is frustrated because so many in the generation to which he has been sent neither recognize him nor act on his words. Are we any different? Do we not sometimes miss the truth even when it's right in front of us? Do we truly recognize and listen to our loved ones, our spouses, our children, our neighbors? Or do we take them for granted and miss what they're really saying to us? Open our eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus. Dear Father, we also ask your help to follow Jesus, to do whatever he tells you. Help us in this Lenten season to pray fervently to fast humbly, and to give to the poor cheerfully. Send forth your Spirit upon us, that we might come alive inside and rejoice in the power you want to release in us. In Jesus' name, amen. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. John nineteen sixteen through 17 Jesus freely accepted the cross and bore it himself through Jerusalem's narrow and strident streets. Panic attacked him as he struggled to find his footing and fell amidst the shouting and jostling crowd. In their faces he saw hate, rage, and disgust. Saddened but resolute, Jesus kept going toward his final end. Sometimes our cross seems unbearable, and we panic, thinking we will never be able to complete the course. God will never allow us to be tested beyond our ability to endure. He will always make a way. Dear God, when we feel alone, attacked, or burdened. Help us remember you will never leave us nor forsake us. May we always bring your hope and consolation to others. 
especially those who carry crosses of pain, old age, loneliness, financial losses, or sickness of loved ones. Amen. Jesus called them together and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be your slave, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Matthew twenty twenty-five through 28 Jesus draws us to himself to unite himself to us so that we learn to love others with his own love. He wants us to know his personal love for us and in turn to re-give that love to our neighbors, especially those most in need. When we know Jesus' personal love for us, it no longer matters what our rank is in the kingdom. For in truth, we are dwelling in his heart and evermore shall be. Dear God, forgive me for wanting to lord it over others because I am still unsure of your love for me. Draw me to Jesus crucified and risen. Let me drink of his love for me. And then give me the grace to love and serve my brothers and sisters with your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people who will produce its fruit. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard Jesus' parables, they knew he was talking about them. Matthew twenty one forty two through 43 and verse 45. In his mission to redeem the world, God blesses us so we can be saved and save others as well. He knows his seed is good, and he expects to find a good crop when he returns. Dear God, thank you for bringing me into your kingdom. You call me to produce fruit for you, both in my own life and by bringing your life to others. Please forgive me for the times I've squandered your grace. Send forth your spirit again to transform me, O Lord, and help me cooperate with you to bring your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen.